Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree. I'm Julia Fisher and today we're in Haifa in northern Israel to bring you another story demonstrating what God is doing to change lives there. If you or somebody known to you is a hardened drug addict and you've given up hope of ever seeing them recover, then stay tuned. You're about to hear the story of Romain, who, as he put it, lost 14 years of his life to drugs. He was a homeless drug addict living on the streets of Tel Aviv. Today, he's a very different person. So listen now as he shares his story with Stuart Fisher. I was born in Russia in 1981. My father is Jewish. My mom is, she has a German roots. And I finished school in Russia. It was the time of the collapse, the former Soviet Union. It was the hard time. And finally, I decided to leave Russia and over to the Germany, to my aunt. In this time, a sister of my mom, she lived in Germany already. And I came to the Germany. I was a young guy. I was a crazy, <laughs> crazy guy. I did the bad stuff. It's like stealing, smoking hash. It's a young guy. When he, his empty head. <laughs> and the, the finally, I find myself in jail in Germany. I was in jail six months, plus minus. The, after that, the uh, Germany government told me, hey, <laughs> you're a good guy, <laughs> but we doesn't need you. <laughs> you. You need to come in back to the Russia. OK, I'm coming, I come in back to the Russia. And uh, how I told already is my father is Jewish. Praise to God, my father is Jewish. And uh, I can make the repatriation to the Israel. So in 1998, I came to the Israel. I came to the kibbutz. I came according to a program who is called Nale 16. It's for young people who is um, devote his life to the Israel. OK, I, I was alone. I left the parents. I left the friends. I left the relatives alone in the foreign country. So a uh, heart is, was empty, and I started using drugs because I was need something what can to relax in me. Yeah? It was drugs, heroin. And I started to use it. I lived in the kibbutz one year, approximately, and I left the kibbutz, and I find myself, after one year, in the streets of the Tel Aviv, homeless, heart addict, use it, stealing money for buy these drugs. And uh, one day I meet one guy, he told me about program in Haifa, House of Victory. And uh, it was already, it was 2003. I lived in the streets of the Tel Aviv for two years. So I went to the program, I entered to the program. The first time in House of Victory, I heard about Jesus what he did for me, what he did for me on the cross. Okay, it's just hurting, but I not take the serious that. In those times, I hope only on my own, on my, myself. I left the program after a six months maybe. What the result? The result negative, the bad result. I turned around from the cheeses to the drug again. And over seven years, a long seven years, I used the drug until 2010. In 2010, I'm again entered to the program, House of Victory. And again, I left, I left. Because I still hope on my own, on myself. From a those days, from the modern day, from today, I see that this is way, my way. It's like I have to over from through, the, the, through this hardness, through the, those years, to the 
long uh, 14 years. Okay, uh, how, I say, uh, how I told already, um, my father, has passed away in 2015. And after, and I, I, I used the drugs. I was the terrible uh, drug addict, terrible. And the one day I heard, I heard in my room, in my dark room, on the middle of the night, I heard clearly voice of the Jesus, voice of the God. He told me, hey, how much you can play game with me? How much you can reject me? Surround, sur it's like survive. And the, the next day, the next morning, I took my bag. <laughs> I left the apartment and I ran to the house of victory. It was April 2017. Yeah. So what happened next? I, I catch the cheeses. <laughs> I hold him with my hand, with my legs. So now, because you know what? Those time when I left 2003 and 2010, the reason is was I not dedicated myself full, full pictures. I not dedicated myself to the cheeses. I still in my soul, some corner, dark corner, you know, something for me. For me, not for Jesus. Now I am full, I belong to the Jesus. Such an amazing story. And here you are sitting, smiling at me, beaming. Of course I'm smiling, <laughs> because I'm free. I'm free. That was 2017. What has God been doing in your life since then? Tell amazing, me. amazing things, amazing miracles. I paid my debts. I was full, full of debts, full of debts. I pay my debts. I saw my mom last summer. I not saw she is not so a uh, maybe 15 years. The last summer, this summer, in July, I make the visit to the Russia and saw my mom. She's old lady. She's already old lady. We crying together. <laughs> yeah. Amazing things, and the, the God, he's, it's just, it's just beginning. He's like continuing work in my life. I feel that, I feel that. Do you have a feeling of where God wants you to be, of what he wants to do going forward? Um, listen, uh, what he said is like, my plan is not your plan. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sure he have the, Amazing plan for my life. Amazing. Do you ever come across people you, you used to know who are using drugs and they have the opportunity to see the change in you or people you may have known from the past? Of course. The, the guys who is the, came to the program, I show him, I can show you my pictures. You will see it's like totally changing, totally. And I saw, I, I, I saw him, um, I show him, sorry, <laughs> I show him to, to the guys who is the came pro, uh, to the program. It's like drug, uh, who is the use the drug. I, I show him in the, my pictures from my past life, how I was a terrible drug addict. And they, say, and they told me, amazing, we not believe it. What in the picture, this guy is you. <laughs> Serious, is the totally, Two different persons. Do you find you sharing your testimony of what God has done in your life and the change that he has made, do you find it impacts those people who are still using drugs, who haven't yet broken through, uh, as you mentioned, that, that desire to be obedient to God and give everything up to him? Do you find that you're making them think? I, I'm encouraging. I'm encouraging the, those guys. They want to um, continue to to be obedience to the Jesus, obedience to the God. Uh, 
the past life is over. Yeah. Is every time I told him to the guys in Beit Sahon program, the past life is over. Now is new life. Are you working in the House of Victory at the moment? I'm sorry. Eric? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm what, help. So what does that involve? I'm like a, I help to the guys who is a, in the program. I'm driving. <laughs> I'm I going with the guys to the um, meeting. We pray together. What is what is needy is needed. What is needed on the program? Because one of the unique things in the House of Victory is when someone comes into the house, one of the established members walks with them, sits with them through the withdrawals, don't you? And you're there holding their hand, looking after them. We pray. pray. Every, yes, yes, we pray. Yeah, I tell my story. I tell my story um, to the guys. It's, listen, it's encouraging. It's very encouraging. And the plus... The guys, this, some guys who is the, came to the program, he knows me from the past life. He knows me from the past life. It's, and they see a change in, in my life. It's true. It's true. You've been listening to Remain sharing his story. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab or Palestinian Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East. If you'd like to know more about our work through our bi-monthly newsletter, including news about our upcoming tours, please either visit our website www.olivetreefund.org or write to me, Julia Fisher, OT. RF PO Box 402 Billingshurst RH 14 4BQ in the UK. Meanwhile, join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye.